All right, so our next free response question with the calculator for our AP cumulative review. So calculator active. All right, so particle moves along the x-axis with the velocity. And we are given the equation for velocity, and we also know our position, okay? So we are then asked, what is the acceleration of the particle at time t equals 3? Well, for part A, hopefully we're okay that the acceleration at time t equals 3, so the acceleration at 3 is going to be the derivative of the velocity at 3. And we have a calculator, so that's all the notation that we need. And we can come over and make sure that we enter in our information correctly. So our velocity equation, if we enter it in, is 10 times the sine of oops, uh, 0 0.4 variable squared. So 10 sine 0 0.4 variable squared all over variable squared minus the variable plus 3, okay? And note that we are in radian mode. We want to make sure we're in radian mode for our purposes. So that's our velocity equation. So then I can come in and I can say, well, math, and come down to our derivative calculator, derivative with respect to our variable of our function, and I want to find out this value at 3. And so I see that the number is negative 2.118. I want you to be aware that we could also have done this in a slightly different way. So if we come over to our window and we say x value from 0 to 3.5, all right? For this particular function, let's just set up negative 10 to 10 as our y value. Oops, we have our dimension error because we had our x scale that was messed up. So negative 10 for the y minimum, 10 for the maximum. And we graph. And so we can see that our graph is coming through. I know it's very light, but we do have our graph there. And we want to know what is the derivative of that graph. So another way that we can do it is to go to calculate and we can say, what is the slope when x is 3? And it'll come through and give us the slope when x is 3, right? dy dx is negative 2.118. So two different ways that we could do this. So negative 2.118. And let's go ahead and use our units, right? Does it give us units here? Any units provided? No units. Okay. Well, if we have no units then we don't use units. So negative 2.118. Find the position of the particle at t equals 3. So for part b, we need to figure out the position. And at time t equals 3, the position is going to be negative 5 plus the change in position from 0 to 3 of our velocity. So that's our setup. Where was I? Plus how much did I change? over the time interval. So on our calculator, we can set that up. Come over. All right, we have negative 5 plus our change from 0 to 3 in position. And the change in position, of course, is going to be given by the integral of velocity. And so my position then is at negative 1.760. So negative 1.760. That is the position of the particle. Then evaluate the integral from 0 to 3.5 of velocity and then evaluate the integral of 0 to 3.5 of the absolute value of velocity and interpret the integral of each in context. So for part C, integral from 0 to 3.5 of our velocity is the net 
change in the position of the particle. All right, whereas, well, let's not go so far, the integral from 0 to 3.5 of the absolute value of velocity is going to be the total distance traveled by the particle. Now, we need to make sure that we include our interval. So this will be from t equals 0 to t equals 3.5. And over here, from t equals 0 to t equals 3.5. Please, when you're asked to interpret a meaning, provide the information about what it represents, the context, as well as the interval in context. We don't have any units, so we can't do anything with the units. Then we need the actual value from our calculator. So we're going to say, what is our integral from 0 to 3.5 of that velocity function? Whoops. And we need to go to our error because we forgot to put it in the dx. And that is... 2.843. Once again, truncating is okay. So 2.843. And for the absolute value, we can come in and do our work with the absolute value. And so we're going to say our integral, once again, from 0 to 3.5. But now we're going to use our absolute value place we can go to our absolute value, math, arrow over, absolute value, our velocity function, make sure we remember our variable, and that gives us, let's see, as it calculates, it calculates, it's thinking, 3.737, so we have 3.737. So that means that our particle at some time was moving to the left and at some time was moving to the right. So we see that our net change is a little bit less than our total distance. Okay. If we continue with our work, a second particle moves along the x-axis. At what time are the two particles moving with the same velocity? So we need to figure out our information regarding velocity. So for part D, we need all right, the velocity at particle 2 to equal the velocity of particle 1, because that'll be when the particles are moving with the same velocity. Therefore, we need 2t minus 1, right, the derivative of t squared minus t to be equal to our velocity equation, right? Where v1 of t, right, we're going to say is the velocity equation that we were given. And if we do that on our calculator, so we come over to our calculator, and we're going to come back to y equals, and we have right, 2 times the variable minus 1. And we're going to graph on our interval. So we're graphing on our interval. And we seem to have an intersection point. And we're going to find the value of that intersection point. Right? The intersection point seems to be somewhere around here. So second, to calculate the intersection point. All right, let's make sure we're kind of close to the intersection point. And the x-coordinate is 1.570. So this occurs at t equals 1.570. And that's our work. Okay. Now, where are the marks for this particular problem? 
Okay. So for our first part, the acceleration of the particle, it's only worth one mark, and it must have the notation, right? V prime of three, or A of three, okay? For the second piece, Right. If I looked at the net change, that was a point. If I looked at the initial condition, that was a point. And then the final answer, that was a point. So there was three marks here. The net change, the initial condition, and the final answer. Meaning that if you forget that initial condition, you can only get one mark. But you have to show your work. No work shown, no credit. For part B, okay, the net change in position from 0 to 3.5, that's one mark, all right? The net change or the total distance traveled on the interval, that's one mark. And then the correct answers is only one mark as long as they're both correct. So there's only three marks on part C, and the correct answers represent only one of the three marks. And if you don't give what the net change or what the total distance is over the time interval, then you cannot get credit. So once again, it's not enough to say the net change in position. You also have to give the interval. And lastly, for part D, the marks on part D that we want to know when the velocities are the same. Well, we need the uh, velocities to be the same. So that's a point. And we find the solution. That's a point. Now, technically speaking, technically speaking, it is necessary it is necessary to show that you understand what that velocity is going to be. So you actually have to have x prime 2 of t needs to equal v of t based on the notation that we have. But the v1 of t is okay also. But for this part, one point for setting equal and one point for the answer. Every one of these AP calculus questions at the moment is worth nine marks, okay? Thank you for your time. Be sure you continue to ask questions in your cumulative review.